This video is supported by Skillshare. Falcon Heavy, the most powerful rocket in the world, has been idle for an entire year ever since its debut in February 2018. We've all seen the launch, and I think you guys would agree with me that it's one of the most exciting launch procedures we've seen in years. Two boosters landing simultaneously is nothing short of majestic. But ever since that launch, we have not seen Falcon Heavy in action again. Part of the reason is that Falcon Heavy is not necessary as Falcon 9 is already sufficient for most launches, but it also had many skeptics believe that Falcon Heavy was never meant to fly regularly, that it is a marketing gimmick. So what is it and what took so long? The reason why we're talking about it today is that we have just gotten confirmation that Falcon Heavy is going to fly again really soon, possibly in March with the Saudi Arabian Arab set it will be followed by Space Test Program Flight 2 a month later. So this begs the question, why aren't Falcon 9 Block 5 used this time, and what took so long for SpaceX to launch Falcon Heavy again? But before I start, let me give you a quick overview of what's going on in the space industry. The industry comprises of three major segments, satellite manufacturing, ground equipment manufacturing, and the launch industry. So although we have been talking a lot about SpaceX and its rockets, it's only a small portion of what's really going on in the industry. In terms of revenue generated per year, Rocket Launchers makes the least money among the three segments. Surprisingly, ground equipment manufacturing actually makes the most money among the three. So in talking about Falcon Heavy, we do need to understand that it is only one third of the story, and it has to fit into the rest of the industry in order to provide the best value. On the demand side, there are also three major groups of clients. Communications clients include telcos and broadcasters, NASA, as well as the US military. There are research institutes and universities purchasing launchers every year. We will not talk about it today as it's only a tiny portion of the market. Therefore, for any piece of equipment to be sent to orbit, it starts with the clients who will go on to employ satellite manufacturers to make the equipment. Once the equipment is done, it's then launched by companies like SpaceX. Once they're in orbit, the operations team takes over and the satellite starts servicing its customers, all the while supported by the ground facilities. What SpaceX focuses on is a small but not so insignificant part of the industry, the launcher part. It has comfortably the best launch forces in the world in terms of capability, followed by the Europeans, the Russians, the Chinese are quickly catching up with their long march rockets, ISRO is also doing well with their SLVs. Falcon Heavy, our main focus of today, is one of the two launchers operational for SpaceX, and it is the most powerful, unproven operational rocket in the world. Taking a look at the two Falcon Heavy launches that are about to happen, it is not hard to see that Falcon Heavy is not entirely necessary for both launches. Falcon 9 would do the job just fine. Here's the capability of the two rockets side by side, and here is the required capability of the missions. As you can see, the Arabsat has a mass of 6,000 kilograms and the destination is geostationary orbit. Therefore, Falcon 9 is capable and experienced enough in performing this type of launches. The heaviest GTO mission SpaceX has performed transported a payload of around 7,000 kilograms. Hence, the use of Falcon Heavy this time is not for its payload capability, but for two other reasons. First, to test SpaceX's ability to quickly refurbish and reuse its boosters. Within one month time, SpaceX plans to use the same recovered boosters for the second launch to demonstrate its capability. Secondly, my suspicion is that US Air Force also required Falcon Heavy to demonstrate its ability with a lighter payload before proceeding to the heavier space test program flight 2. This is just American government being cautious and admittedly, Falcon Heavy does need more flight to demonstrate its well-celebrated capability. Space Test Program Flight 2 will carry 25 satellites to multiple orbits. In addition, there will be a 5,000 kg ballast mass to demonstrate its payload capability. These two crucial test launches will also set the tone for the kind of payload possibilities of Falcon Heavy. The truth is, no matter we like it or not, as long as the payload does not go above 10,000 kg, Falcon 9 will remain a capable and proven alternative. So if the payload mass is less than 10,000 kilograms, it does not make economic sense to use Falcon Heavy as Falcon 9 is 
a much more experienced vehicle. Here I want to mention another thing. Launching Falcon Heavy is riskier because it has more separation events. As we see more and more Falcon Heavy launches, we will slowly get to know what is the right mass for it. I have a suspicion that SpaceX will push for more Falcon Heavy launches in the future as it can charge more for it while still cheaper than its competitor, United Launch Alliance. Then it comes to the last question we need to answer today. What took so long? It's a combination of various reasons. It's been an entire year of launches and Falcon Heavy is used exactly zero times. Taking a look at the mission SpaceX has performed, it is not hard to see that there isn't a single payload that's above 10,000 kilograms. So Falcon Eye is sufficient. This is the primary reason why it happened, but there is another reason that overshadows the whole thing. The big Falcon rocket. There is no way around it. Depending on the speed of development, when BFR is ready, both Falcon Eye and Falcon Heavy will be made obsolete. BFR is designed to be more powerful yet cheaper than both of them. It would be foolish to keep launching Falcon Eye and Falcon Heavy when BFR is fully ready. But before that happens, Falcon Heavy will be commissioned for heavier military payloads as it is the only super heavy lift vehicle operational right now. The timeline of BFR development hence is very important for the usage of Falcon Heavy. NASA is planning to build a moon station in the 2020s. At the time, Falcon Heavy will be the primary means of resupply missions along with the space launch system built by Boeing. Unless BFR is finished before that, of course. Replacing Falcon Eyes and Falcon Heavies with BFR will also be a gradual process that depends on the manufacturing capability of the Raptor engines, the cryogenic tanks, so on and so forth. So until SpaceX has a fleet of BFR ready to launch every single day, Falcon Eyes and Falcon Heavies are going to be used instead. Regardless, it is truly exciting what SpaceX is doing. The potential of Falcon Heavy is tremendous. Is it going to be replaced by BFR? Yes, but before that happens, Falcon Heavy will still be the most powerful rocket with a majestic landing that captures the world's imagination every time. As the space industry gets more futuristic, our educational system is also embracing changes. One of the companies that emerged from these changes is Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome online community with over 20,000 classes in analytics, business, technology, and more. You can think of it as a toolbox that helps you improve your skills when you needed it most. Want to improve your productivity? Thomas Frank, the college info geek, has recently launched his exclusive lessons on Skillshare that helps young people organize and improve their workflows. It's called the Productivity Masterclass, and I recommend it to you. The even better news is the first 500 people to sign up with the link in the description down below will get a two month free trial. So sign up today and start bringing changes to your life. By doing so, you're also helping this channel. So a big thank you from me as well. Hey, I want to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for giving me feedbacks and suggestions actually for this exact video. Thank you so much for that. And if any one of you guys want to be a part of my Patreon community, definitely head on to patreon.com slash curious elephant for that. Also, do you guys know that currently it's the Chinese Lunar New Year? It's happening right now, and if you have any Chinese friends who are celebrating that, do wish them a happy Lunar New Year. This year is the year of pigs, so let's hope all of our uh, 2019 will be prosperous. All right, I'll see you guys next time.